So the subject today is uh, fake news. Now imagine if you left planet Earth on June 14th last year and you returned today, one year later. You came back to the news that uh, the UK is in the process of uh, leaving the European Union. Boris Johnson is UK's foreign minister. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. And France is led by a president and a political party you never heard of. And the new prime minister of the UK has uh, just called an election to strengthen her play and gotten a hung parliament in return. So you may wonder who needs fake news with real news like this? Today, actually, our student group uh, at the executive program for advocacy in international affairs have been together here now for two weeks. And one of the things we have discussed is uh, what we call defensive advocacy, i.e. the ability to respond to unforeseen <coughs> events. Because we believe that a good, well-planned defense is as important as a, a good offense. And my premise is that you cannot be certain about success unless you have prepared for all possible unforeseen scenarios. Just consider the recent UK election. Theresa May called people to the ballots with a message of strong and stable. Think about how that message resonates when terrorists attack young people at a concert one weekend and on the streets of London the weekend <coughs> after. Those terrorist acts are for sure very sad and very real news, but they illustrate how politicians and leaders no longer are in control of their message. External events and planned interference have become the new normal. Let us reflect on the US election also, if it's true that the Russian authorities truly orchestrated the leaks from the Democratic Party, as the former FBI director so adamantly insisted last week, then the role of interference has risen to a new level. Imagine that the world's democratic superpower no longer is in control of its domestic election process. The subject of fake news belong, in my view, in this context. How malicious forces interfere in democratic processes and how the border between the true and false is becoming increasingly, increasingly blurred. Fake news is not just a PR problem, it is a democratic problem, rocking with the very foundation of our democratic processes. So how? Is this possible? Because of technology. The speed of the internet and the proliferation of social media. For me, communication is built on three sacred principles. The first, the sender or the source is known. Second, the information can be verified. And third, the receiver can independently make up her or his mind without fear or without any undue influence. Social media, and I'd be surprised if not all of us are on some of the social media, uh, they have been referred to as an echo chamber. We tend to link up with people that we agree with. So you have groups of followers with the same opinions growing without actually challenging each other so much. And technology reinforces this fact by algorithms because social media platforms know what we like and they know that we are more likely to come back if we see what we like. So therefore they show us more of what we like so that we get more articles suggested to us which we generally agree with. When do you last recall to be driven to something you fundamentally disagree with? The question then for us today is what can we do about it? The first is always rebut false information. So if you see something you know not to be true, correct it. Others 
may not have that same knowledge. <coughs> Secondly, support the free press by subscribing and paying for information. The role of the media is more important than ever, and their existing or real existence is threatened by financial conditions. Pick a few media that you believe in and pay voluntarily for their services. The third thing that I think we could do as, as individuals is to participate in the dialogue that takes place and also in the elections. I'm also keen to hear your views on how we as a society can deal with the phenomenon of fake. I think we need to establish an ethical platform and transparent editorial processes for major communication platforms such as Facebook and Google. Secondly, education and awareness of fake news amongst the young population is, is very critical. And um, the third thing you can uh, consider is to do something like what we're doing with tobacco. They are followed by health warning in most societies. Maybe we need to have a similar kind of warning for promotional materials and content marketing that appears in newspapers. Um, because it could say this information is supported by funding from parties with economical interest in this information being spread. Maybe you, maybe you open your eyes and think about it differently. I'd like to ask you, are there any other ideas that we could do as a society? So, to um, conclude, my basic message to you today is that Maybe it's an oxymoron, but I think fake is real. And it's something we really need to reflect upon and act upon. I think this is true whether we are a leader, a politician or a parent. We need to be ready for fake and we need to fight it. So I'd like to ask you for questions or comments or reflections. And then we can have a good uh, bit of a debate here now in the next 20 minutes before we have some uh, reflections. Please, first. Critical thinking seems to have gone out the window. The original cause of this might be, let's say, a broader malaise from mm -hmm. the established yeah. authority. It's also done to protect their image and their reputation. Yeah. The reporting is real. The event is fake. Every time someone comes with a news or something, I try to ask for them, what is your source? Do you believe that reporters can report an objective truth? Well, I would go a little bit beyond social media in thinking about technology and information. Well, thanks for coming. Enjoy your questions and comments. Thanks for that.